Welcome back. Have you had a great time at Forever this weekend? Have you had a good time? Good experience? Good. Very good. Well, we're so glad you're back. This is our last session together. And uh, what we've done, you have been asked through uh, the website to submit questions. We've got a host of questions. We'll get through as many as we can. We're going to go probably till about 1250. What Dawn and I are do, we will just pitch the questions to the panel. You've heard from the panel uh, over this past session. And then we're just going to, we'll move as rapid fire as we can through the questions, but want you just to hear a few things. I want to say this to you too, and this is specifically for people who attend Lakewood. If you do not have a church home, we encourage you to find a church home. Whether it's, it's at Journey Church, whether it's at Southside in Jackson, whether it's, and I can't say it, Brenda, so please say it for me. Can you say it into the mic? Say it one more time with the mic on. <laughs> <laughs> Can y'all turn the mic on for, is it on? Hello. It's on, there you go. Casa Conexión. Casa, say that with Brenda. Casa yeah, see, I just, man, Does that mean we, we were talking about last night, mean? Francisco and Brenda, when we gathered as a Spanish team and we were now. praying, and Francisco was praying in, in Spanish, and it's like, man, that, that's, that's just got to be the voice of God there, you know, it, it just, he sounds smarter, it, you know, <laughs> when you pray in Spanish and you talk like a hick like me from South Georgia, it just, Francisco sounds more godly, so, uh, <laughs> anyway. Here's what we're going to do, though. We'll get through as many questions as we can. What some next steps for those who are not plugged into a church, whether it's any of our churches here that are represented. Uh, starting Wednesday a week, not this coming Wednesday, but on Wednesday, February 7th, here if you want to attend Lakewood or just come here on Wednesday nights from 6.15 to 7.30, Dawn and I are going to take what we did in these sessions, the last night and this morning, we're going to take it and we're going to drill down even more specifically. We had a lot of content we just didn't have time to get into. And so if you want to take a next step, kind of a deeper dive into what we've talked about uh, over the past two sessions last night and this morning, we invite you to come. It'll start February 7th and run for four consecutive weeks here at Lakewood. For those of you, and you know who you are, that are in our, the ministry that we're, we're, we give oversight to, the nearly married and the young adults, I think there's 24 couples here in that season of life. We're going to dive into this material on Super Bowl Sunday and start doing the exact same thing. So at 9.30 on Sunday morning, those who are here, even though you've heard it, don't think, well, I've heard it. We don't. There's a lot more that we've got to say, and we want you to interact with, with one another, some personal reflection, some table talk kind of stuff. So a lot more material, and Lord willing, we'll put this together and package it for some resources. Let me just say this, and this is not promoting us. This is promoting forever. Dawn and I have resources that we've just put together through the years, some principles of life. Those who are around, they've heard us talk about these principles. We packaged this several years ago, and it's just a resource that we put together because we or our, the marriage mentors that we have around us can't meet with every couple. And so we package the principles of life. It's about 55 principles that you could take and read as a couple and just process. They're great for small group materials as well. It's typically have four to five. But there's resources, keys, six keys to better sex and marriage. And I tell it this way. It's kind of a weird way to say it. It's, it's my and Dawn's sexual story. So, but it's not, it's, that sounds so weird to say it that way. Yeah, that's, yeah but it's, it's the only way I know how to say it. It was where we went from 1990 when we were really sick relationally and sexually to where we are today. And it was a road map that God took us on personally for sexual healing. It does not come from Marvin Gaye. Let me just tell you that. Sexual healing, it's a great song to play when you're with one another, but it's, it's, not, it's not the way we receive sexual healing. We received it through Jesus Christ. Let me tell you this. I'm gonna, this is just a side note because I don't think it's here. What we have found more often than not, most of the sexual problems that couples experience today in marriage has little to nothing to do with physiological issues, erectile dysfunction, vaginal issues, none of that kind of stuff. What we find is not, it's not genital. It's mental. 
And we find when you get your stinking thinking about the beauty of sex as God created it, deal with the issues from your sexual past that brings a great deal of guilt, shame, and condemnation, all of this other stuff will start taking place regularly as God intended it. That's all in Six Keys to Better Sex. And we have brown paper bags to slide it down in. So that That's right. It's like going to a liquor nobody store. Nobody will know. Because we, we see y'all. We see y'all when we drive by the wagon wheel. It's the same way. It's or we'll just mail it to yeah. you. Just, that's right. Yeah, that's you know, right. We'll wrap it that's carefully right. so nobody all, will know what never, you're getting. They never, they never sell in the bookstore here at no, Lakewood. They but we get plenty of office. emails about it. Can we get a it? copy of that? Yeah, yeah. right. It's okay. But here's, it is a black market book. I say all that not to promote us. We are donating any of the receipts of that to Forever Marriage because we believe in the ministry of Forever Marriage. And so I encourage you to buy that, not for us. We don't get a penny from it. We want to put as much money back because we want to continue to create great experiences like this for you in the future. So now, with that, with that we've listened. How, did, how many of y'all just enjoyed your breakout sessions? Y'all, it, I'll, yeah. I know, we heard I know you did. We heard your breakout sessions. I'm so thankful to serve, to have this team up here um, and to put before you additional resources for you to be in contact with in our local community throughout the year. So as you have gotten to know these guys, um, we're going to get to hear some more from, from them. So Scott and I are just going to be the ones who pitch out the questions. Um, I, I just want you to make some notes. They're available. And they've made themselves available to you, but they'll be available to you throughout, throughout the year uh, as well just to sort of pour into you. Uh, in, in your marriage. So we're going to start by pitching out some questions to them and let you hear some more from your awesome breakout team um, as well. So do me a favor, if you will, Trent and Mariana, if you'll just introduce yourself, because not everybody got to go to mm -hmm. the breakout session. So just tell us who you are, how long you've been married, um, uh, and what your favorite ice cream is. Okay, we're Trent and Mariana Dolly High. We've been married for 21 years, and... My favorite ice cream is just chocolate. Cookies and cream. <laughs> uh, Jeff and Candy Williams. Uh, we will be married 21 years this March. And uh, we have three kids. And my favorite ice cream is chocolate. What's mine? Vanilla. No. No? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I'm just thinking about it at home. Rainbow Sherbert. Oh, wow. I, I had to Sherbert? think like ice creams. You know, places. There we go. I'm good. I'm good. I recovered. Yeah, that's right. Good I recovered save. well. There you good go. I'm going to go sit down at a table now. <laughs> good save. Brenda and Francisco. Hi, my name is Brenda Romero, and we've been married for uh, almost 22 years, and we have a daughter and a son. And my favorite uh, flavor is chocolate. My favorite is uh, strawberry. Oh, good. Strawberry, <laughs> all right. My name is Francisco Romero, pastor at uh, Casa Conexión here here in Gainesville. We have a three and other church in Marietta and Valdosta and Stone Mountain. And we have here two pastors from mm. Marietta and from Stone Mountain. And that's awesome. Right. Awesome. Well, we're Daniel and Aaron Caldwell. We've been married for nine years. Uh, I was told once by my dentist, he always gives me marriage advice every time I go, to say that we were happily married, that, that key word, happily. Mm. We've been happily married for nine years. Um, my favorite ice cream is vanilla, and yours is? Peach. 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 Wow. Okay, bring it. Bring it. Very good. All right, first question. What are some fun shared activities or hobbies that you and your spouse share? What are some fun shared activities? Obviously, the key word is shared, not what you do separate of each other. Right. What are some fun shared activities or hobbies that you and your spouse share? We, we, we like to uh, exercise together, okay. so mainly walk. We like to walk, okay. hold hands, talk. That's good. Um, we're, to eat. we're simple, though. Eat, go, we like to go out to eat, shop, movies, that kind of thing. Those are, our, those are our main things. Eat, shop, movies, exercise. Do you run together? We do. You do? 
Yes. Who's the faster pace? He runs ahead of me. He runs but ahead he's so of kind because he'll run and then he'll loop back. Okay. And, and let me go on with it. Okay, because yeah. see, for us, Candy, that does not work. Does not. That frustrates Dawn, that I, I run around her in circles while she's running. Uh, and so, so we, we cannot run together. The key of this question is figure out what works for you. It works for Sandy, I mean for Candy and, and Jeff. It does not work for us. I'm a slow runner. I can stop and tie my shoe mid-pace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we have we have walking, we have eating. What else do you do together? Fun shared hobbies. Brenda. Uh, we like to go uh, to picnic together. Okay. We, uh, we take lunch and have it outdoors, and we like movies mm -hmm. and to read together. Hey, Brenda, favorite place that you and Francisco like to go picnic? Well, we've been going to uh, Lake Lanier. Yeah. Buford Dam. Buford Dam. Yeah. Okay, very good, very good. Hey, here's, here's a little, how many of you have heard about Movie Pass? Anybody? Micah, can, do you have a mic back there? I, I could just speak for Micah. Micah, tell us real quick about Movie Pass for couples who like to watch movies together. This is key. This is key for movie pass. This is going to save yes. you big, big bucks. Uh, you pay. You can pay for couples. Or you can pay one card. You guys get a card in the mail that says you can have unlimited per month, one per day movie for ten bucks a month per person. So if you get a deal, you can do more than that. You can do an annual subscription or whatever. But per month, you do ten dollars. You can do um, any amount of movies throughout the month, one per day, in virtually any theater in this area. Yeah. So basically, Movie Pass is an app, right, Micah, that you download. Yeah, you download Our yeah. son Reese has done it. They will send you a card, and when you get within 100 yards of the theater, you basically log in and say, hey, I'm here, I'm going to this movie. But if you like to see movies, once you've seen two movies, you've paid for it for the month. As Micah said, you can go for one movie a day, so you can get up to 30, 31 movies a month for 10 bucks. Movie Pass. So I'm, I get nothing from that, but I think if you like to watch movies together, I find a lot of couples do. It's a great thing. Any other shared activities? I would, we have six children. We didn't say that earlier. And mm -hmm. so our time, our time is a little bit more limited, but... Our favorite thing right now, I would say, would be like watch. Sleeping. We sleep together. <laughs> we do sleep together. <laughs> The we that we watched together. something, but yeah. my husband got us a boxer, and I don't know what it is, but she just, like, brings us closer together. So we snuggle with our dog and watch movies. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my wife is just incredibly amazing, and I don't know why she said yes, but she wanted a – she mentioned a boxer, wanted another dog, and I'm like, are you – have you lost your mind, woman? That's mm -hmm. what I said. Because mm -hmm. we already have a dog. And six kids. And a rabbit. Anyway, and a cat. <laughs> and, a <rabbit. laughs> and a cat. And <laughs> and so, you know, it just dawned on me one day, because I'm, I'm more of a realist, right, at some sometimes. And um, I don't know if it was God or what or my conscience, but I, I, needed, I knew that I needed to do something crazy. Mm -hmm. And for her, and something that didn't make sense. You with me? Mm -hmm. It made no sense for me to get a dog. Mm -hmm. So I went on Craigslist and went dog hunting because because I obviously love her and I'm amazing too. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. yes you are. And so, and so I found her a boxer and set the whole thing up. Took her on a date. Took her to some strange town to meet somebody because it's Craigslist, right? It's creepy. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, and and give her this boxer and just the look on her face was priceless. And this 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 crazy boxer named Luna, Luna <laughs> Lun, lunatic, has okay. she's brought us so much joy yeah. and laughter, and yeah. it's it's totally a god thing. Awesome. Oh, awesome. I love that. You just we're gonna be talking about that later. Trent, thank you for throwing me under the bus <laughs> because I have. I have been like, oh we, are, we are trying to get our kids out of the house. I don't want to bring another one in. And, uh, so. Thank you, right. Trent. Dolly, hi. You thud up. That's me. All right, here we go. Question number two. How do you keep the spark in your marriage? How do you keep the spark in your marriage from kids to all these things that we're talking about that can clutter intimacy, spark romance, emotional connection? How do you keep it? What is working for you? Uh, 
we, we work on it. We plan for it. Um, if, you, if you don't, you know, you, you got to make a plan. So we, we, make, we write it down on a schedule. You know, this is the day that we're going to spend together. This is the date that we're going to have. And it's about making deposits in your life. And so I want to make deposits into that bank account, into her life. And uh, it just, it works. So, so we, we communicate about that. We talk about it. And it just, it, it's more fun when you can talk about those things. You so, Jeff, tell me this. There's some couples here that are probably pushing back. Where is the romance in planning it? I had a buddy one time that he and his wife had to schedule. They put sexual intimacy on the calendar right. because they, they just started seeing it getting crowded out, and they wanted to be strategic. So, y'all, somebody, not just Jeff and Candy, speak to this idea of scheduling just romantic time. Where's, is that romantic to have to schedule it? It's called anticipation. Mm -hmm. There's something romantic about that. If you've made a plan and you know it's coming and maybe, I'm not saying that I do this, maybe you send him a text saying, hey, I can't wait. And with today's texting, you have all <laughs> these fun emojis. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, you know, Scott and Dawn's book, I bet you guys got some sexy emojis in there too, right? So many emojis. Just, yeah. so sometimes many for emojis. me, Trent, sometimes <laughs> Anticipation is, for me, is, is much more uh, fulfilling than participation. And uh, so, yeah, go ahead. But, but if you wouldn't spend so much time anticipating, maybe you could participate longer. <laughs> oh! Touche, girl, come on. That's a good one. That's a good one. Trent threw me under the bus, now my wife throwing me under the bus. Marietta, you want to come anybody next? All right. <laughs> Sorry, Very did good. I say that out loud? I set you up. I, I tossed you that softball, have. didn't I? We're going to edit that out, right? Yeah, that's right. That's not on. That's, oh, it is on camera. Okay. All right. <laughs> Daniel Aaron, speak to us. How do, how do you keep Spark alive? And we're not just talking sexual intimacy, just keeping emotional connectedness together. How do you do it? Um, I think for me, a lot of it starts way before. So when he takes the time to focus on what I need or he sees I'm really stressed with the kids and he takes the time to remove me from that and do things for me ahead of time, I, that intimacy for him grows and makes me more excited to be with just him. Very good, very good. I'm, I'm, Aaron, we, and I'm, I'm directing this to every week, Dawn and I just finished with our Empty Nest group we're reading a book right now, it's a few years old, by Ted Cunningham and Gary Smalley called uh, Great Parents, Lousy Lovers. Uh, what we find in our generation, for those in their 50s, 40s, and some even in their 30s, they get so focused, they prioritize so heavily the parenting that uh, Trent and Marianna talked about in their, their breakout that they become phenomenal team-oriented. We're going to end this thing together uh, parents, but they become very lousy lovers. So here's a question that's going to segue us into that. How can we get out of the funk we are in or that we have become more like roommates than lovers? Raising children is an amazing journey to take together, but we never have time for our marriage. So basically, I want to pitch it to you, panel. How do we re remain not only great parents, but great lovers as well? What do you do? Well, I'll um, speak to that. I, I know for Jeff and I, we, I mentioned this in our session that we had earlier, we sit down together and we plan out 40 days in advance. Mm -hmm. And we make sure that we have those date nights planned. And fortunately for us in the season that we're in, we take a day off of work. And mm -hmm. I thank God for public school mm -hmm. and those teachers <laughs> that keep mm -hmm. my kids um, <laughs> Friday so that we can have that day alone. And I think that that's important. As much as we enjoy going places and seeing a movie, being able to have good quality alone time is is so vital and so important. And I came from a very child-centered home. And uh, the week we came home for, from our honeymoon, my parents got divorced. Mm. And I think that that spoke volumes to me, that we had to be sure that we were putting each other first mm. in our marriage and in our home life. And, and, and we wanted our kids to see that. And, and they know that. And they know that we take time 
for one another. And we go in the bedroom and we shut the door. And you better be bleeding if you're just even thinking <laughs> about looking at yeah. the door, you know. And and so you, it's, it's creating those boundaries inside of your home and around your relationship as a husband and wife. And, and kind of being mean about the vision and yeah. letting your kids That's know right. that. Mm -hmm. But it, it's... It, for you to know that it is okay for your kids to wait or it's okay to send your kids to grandparents or do the trading off of date sure. nights yep. because having, you know, hours together, it's not just a date where you just get in the car and you go somewhere and you come back home and the babysitter's there. It's, it's having hours alone together so mm -hmm. that you're not rushed and you have time to talk, you have time to be intimate yep. together. And, and it does. It builds an incredible bond. It's good. It's worth it. It's good. It's good. We live in a highly uh, social society where at the dinner table, you, when you're out at restaurants, it's probably not uncommon if you look around the restaurant that there may be a husband and wife sitting there, maybe even with their family, and they're all dialed into their device, be it uh, an iPad. We were at a local restaurant a couple of weeks ago that Dawn and I frequent after Sunday church, and the couple sitting next to us, it was kind of cute, but it was, it was very telling. There was, they had a little device, their phone right there in front of probably a two-year-old boy, and he was just sitting there like this with his chin just watching the whole time. And it kept him quiet. But here's the question. What's your advice about screen time and couples? Your advice about screen time and couples, be it your iPad, be it whatever device you're using, what have you s witnessed in y your churches, in your, in your homes? Uh, what are you doing about it yourself to find if there's such thing as a balance in that? I'd say for me, I, I know that um, I work a lot of hours, so uh, sometimes coming home and, and getting, just sitting down and, and looking at Facebook is just like a dead something to just make it easy you know and it, it really that for us um something that doesn't work well it doesn't work very well in every any marriage just to go home and check out so finding the time to be able to stop put the phone down and that, that's Aaron's big thing I am gone a lot I work a lot but she always says you know the, the quality time if you're going to be with me put your phone down focus on me focus on the kids and that makes the biggest difference when we have that limited amount of time that we're making the, the most of it mm -hmm. I don't know that we're doing super great at it. I think we still struggle with it. And I think for everyone, it's just about being intentional and being purposeful. I mean, we have to remind each other, you know, let's put our, our screens down. He likes to watch motorcycle videos, and I watch Masterpiece Theater. And we could both sit there and get sucked into that for the rest of the evening, and then it's time to go to sleep. And that happens some days. And then we're, we're back to saying, hey, you know, let, let's put them down and spend time together. It takes intentionality and and being purposeful i think i think it's something that we've become addicted to um scott i don't know if you got an opening this week or not but i could probably use a session mm -hmm. bro on just yeah screen addiction tuesday, right? tuesday at four I mean, for it, you it's, and Mary it's like yeah. an impulse mm -hmm. for skype. me sometimes we'll skype. We'll, we'll skype you yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> where i mean you guys ever feel FaceTime. that way like you we'll find FaceTime. yourself looking at a screen you don't even know why the heck you actually yeah. looked at it but you're there I mean, it really, it really can be a type of addiction. So mm -hmm. I, it's something we have to stay on top of. And, um, and I think that's where the structure comes in, where we got to say, hey, at this time, we're, gonna, we're just going to cut them off. Yeah. Um, like, we don't let them, you know, come to the dinner table. You know, there's no screens at the dinner table unless it's being used to create family interaction yeah. or discussion right. you know, as a tool for engagement. Um, what are some other things that, that we do? We don't let the kids uh, keep them in their rooms. I think it's a big mistake to let your kids keep, you know, yeah, keep them in their rooms unless mm -hmm. they're mature enough where they can handle that. And you know that, and you know if they're using it as a tool, you know, there's some exceptions. Yeah. But I, I just think that y you have to be very intentional and don't just assume that it's going to solve itself. Mm -hmm. um, and there, there's some changes that you know that we've that we've got to make to make that better in in our marriage. One of the things. Uh, Every year in January, the 1st of January, 1st of August, here at Lakewood, we go through uh, 21 days of prayer, and we do challenge some of our folks that uh, want to do join us in 21 days of fasting. 
Right now, we, today is the last day of it, and, and couples and individuals fast from a variety of things. Some might fast from social media, but I know one of our couples here is fasting from screens. Uh, so for the 21 days, they have fasted from all screens, be it television, be it computers, other than working, uh, what they have to do there, but their devices, removing all social media, that kind of thing, they have fasted. And if you want to say, as, as, if you want to see, as Trent just alluded to, whether something has a hold on you, try to fast for it for a period of time. Because in, inadvertently, we all have a habit in, in dead time, as Daniel said, just to pull up and just pull this out. When we're in conversations, one of the things that we have noticed, and this is not an indictment, so please don't hear it this way, but with millennials, often, it's a generalization, is they are so attached to this, they lose the interpersonal ability to make eye contact, to have relational conversations, hard conversations. I, let me just say this parenthetically. Do not have hard conversations on this. If you're texting back and forth to your spouse something beyond just what time do I need to be home, what time is the soccer game, that kind of thing, just factual kind of stuff. When it gets into opinions, feelings, and needs, don't go there on this. It needs to be here, face to face, at the minimum here, but not I mean, here. I do think you can certainly, I'll text you I love you or oh, uh, yeah, fancy yeah, emoji yeah. If you, or Yeah, if you like want to send me some fancy emojis, give me some anticipation about some participation, that's great. All but right. uh, <laughs> Yes. It always comes to It's that. always. Everything in life circles around of Jesus course. and sex. Yes, okay. Lordy. Hallelujah. Praise be to the Lamb. There you go. Yeah. All right. Um, here, here's a question for the ladies on the panel. Um, I just want you to know I didn't write this question. <laughs> if your husband always talks over you and rarely lets you talk. <laughs> you wrote that question. No, I didn't. I cannot yes. imagine yeah. having That's a husband your who would do that. I have never done <laughs> I know. It's a good question. If your husband always talks over you and rarely lets you talk, do you keep pushing to be heard even if it causes more arguments, or do you just stay quiet and give up? Mm. <laughs> you do not have a mic. This is the wives. <laughs> I, my recommendation would be in a moment that is appropriate, mm -hmm. and timing is everything in having hard conversations, but not in that moment when you're feeling hurt or angry, but to have that conversation and just let your husband know that you would feel really loved if in conversations he would allow you to finish your sentence or to express your thoughts, mm -hmm. that you feel that he's talking over you. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, having that conversation in the heat of the moment when you feel upset is probably not going to be the best time. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. I very much agree with that. Um, ours is the opposite. <laughs> we have trouble <laughs> with him not getting to finish his sentence because I'm really excited. Um, and he has told me before, outside of the actual moment, hey, it's, it really sh is disrespectful. It doesn't show me respect. And mm. honestly, I didn't even notice I was doing it. So sometimes it may be they don't realize, and that conversation does need to be had. But just like she said, out of the exact situation, you know, later when you're calm and it's not sounding in defense. I think it was really interesting that I said, if you're talking to your husband, I don't feel really loved. And your husband says, I don't feel respected. Yes. Because that's what, I mean, we're, we're wanting love. The men are wanting respect. And it, it's the same. I mean, we talk over each other all the time because we're both extroverts and we like to tell everybody everything. We're used to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we like to tell everybody everything. Yeah. Which this is a great segue, and we'll, we're going to tie into this next question. This is for the husbands. How do you create a loving environment when your spouse doesn't respect you? How do you create a loving environment when your spouse doesn't respect you? Mm -hmm. I'm going to translate for him. Pues primero creo que le pido a Dios que que me dé una actitud positiva para con ella. First, I ask the Lord for a, a positive attitude towards her. 
that I may see beyond the circumstances and what would the results be, be of having a good attitude mm. Mm -hmm. good. thank you Francis. we can all go home now do y'all yes. feel that way yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't you just I feel felt like that way it's like <laughs> Jesus just spoke okay yeah thank you Francisco it's so it's just awesome. so true Daniel you were going to yeah. say something bro I would say that usually the first when I when I see that Aaron is is upset with me or she doesn't respect me, I have to kind of stop and realize what and start asking myself what have I done that she's not not respecting me for? Yeah. Like how am I treating her? If I'm not treating her the way that I should, that's usually what leads to you know she doesn't respect you from something that you have done. Typically, yeah. it's it's not the other way. So, um, stopping thinking about what I've done, getting myself back in line with Christ, and then start working towards um, something I've heard. Scott said before that the ma more mature person is going to act first. Yeah. So you know that that's uh, not that I am more mature, but, <laughs> but yeah. to, to yeah. Make, don't say I'm the more mature yeah, no, 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 person, no, no. So, so I'm going to act first here. Don't say that so, to your spouse. But just that's to, to remind mature. yourself yeah. that of, yeah. you know you have to act first. Yeah, that's good. Jeff, you got something? Yeah, I, I mean this is this you're in this for the long haul. Yeah. So so I I want to my my job is to love her. Well, what if she doesn't respect? That's not my job. That's right. My job is to love her like mm -hmm. Christ loved the church. Yeah. And, and, I, and, and I believe if I do that, and if, if I'm not doing anything, and she's just disrespecting that, that's a heart issue. And the Holy Spirit will deal with that. I mean, I have to believe that. But, but generally, I mean, I, 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 I think my wife's closer to Jesus than I am, okay? I mean, we have a joke. I think my kids think she's God. Because we'll be riding down the road, and she'll say something about, I think we should do this at the church, or this or that. And I'll go, no, nah, I don't think so. And then two weeks, two, you know, a couple of weeks later, we're in a staff meeting, or we're at church, and I go, the Lord said. And, you know, my kids are like, oh, Mom said that. Mom must be God. That was funny. Y'all didn't laugh. Yeah. So I'm joking, all right? But, 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 but this is about me loving her. This is about you loving her. So find out what rings the bell, man. Find out affection. What, how... How can you love her? How can you win that heart? You won it one time, and you got her to say yes. Okay, the work doesn't stop when you say I do. The work is just started. So keep working. Yeah. Keep doing, and yeah. don't stop. We're going to conclude. We've got about three more minutes, and I want you, I'm going to give you a few moments to think about this, but Dawn and I, if you just have one parting word of encouragement, maybe exhortation, just loving reminder, uh, just pretend like these are your kids, and this is just a word we want to speak over you, maybe a blessing, um, and y'all can go in any order, but just a, a parting word of encouragement or blessing, uh, and then Dawn and I'll close this out. Well, uh, I just would like to... Um say that God is faithful and he believes in us. He trusts that he can do in us what he said. And I just, I just pray over my life and my husband that we are faithful enough in God to see him, that he may reveal and open our eyes and see the children that he, he made us to be, the people, the godly people he has called us to be in him. So um, uh, that's a struggle and that's a prayer I have every day. Lord, may I see myself as you see me because only then I can like picture myself and go go after that and and, and rely on him and, and rest in him and I I pray that that you do that too because when we put our, our human eyes and our human conditions we are not we will fail many times and be discouraged so it's only in him that we can do it hmm. thank you Brenda I think um, the Lord shared this, I didn't think this, but he shared something with me this week that I just can't get away from, and I had in my heart, if I could share one thing with you this weekend, it would be this, and it is to be the bondage breaker mm. and the legacy leaver. I came from, I told you, a home that was broken, and when we came into our marriage, I just had such a passion in my heart that there was no plan B. 
and that I wanted to leave a different legacy for my children and for their children and claim God's promise that he has blessings to the 1,000th generation. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to leave. And so that's what I would just encourage you to be, no matter what your past or history of your family has been, be the bondage breaker mm -hmm. and be the legacy leaver. That's good. Thank you, Candy. And you can start that today. Yes. What about what she's done or he's done? Mm -hmm. Not to go all Rafiki on you in the Lion King, but, mm -hmm. you know, he, hit it, he hits them in the head. Well, that hurt. Well, it's in the past, mm -hmm. all right? I can't do anything about the past, mm -hmm. but I can impact the future. Right. Mm -hmm. So go impact the future. That's right. That's good. I would say that whatever it takes to make your marriage not just work, but make it thrive, do it fight for it you know god fought for us and he he has done he did whatever it took to redeem us and our marriages are worth fighting for even if it hurts even if it's hard i think we have to go to those places and fight for it get her a boxer <laughs> um and whatever else she wants happy wife happy life i, I love you <laughs> no, seriously, seriously, the one thing, if I could leave you with one thing, it would be to humble yourself yes. and focus on you. Mm -hmm. Just focus on you. Stop trying to fix the other person. Go to counseling for you. Mm -hmm. You get healthy, and that's going to change things. Yeah. I think for us, it's probably our prayer has been just to be intentional, to take this home with you. Don't let it stop here, but take it home and apply it in your marriage. There's times where, like, we're great. Let's just set that aside for a while, and then you're not great anymore. So be intentional. Be proactive in applying these things to your marriage. Yeah. I'm going to close this just as if I were doing a wedding. I do weddings pretty regularly, and... One of the things I learned years ago from a pastor that our daughter was under for a period of time, Chris Hodges, he, he talked about covenant marriage and he talked about the, the rights that we give up and the responsibilities that we pick up. And one of the things I'm going to challenge you <clears throat> as a responsibility to pick up from this point forward is to love unconditionally and to respect unconditionally. Now, most of us that are believers here, we, we understand this idea of unconditional love. We, we know it from the Greek. We've heard it talked about in the phrase agape love, loving as Jesus loved us. And most of us buy into that. But in our American culture, we believe that uh, respect is earned. I'm, I'm an older guy. There was this uh, investment uh, commercial that came on in the 70s and 80s. And there was this guy, he would talk about it's earned. And uh, I don't know if y'all even remember that, so I shouldn't have even said it. But anyway, this is what Paul says in Ephesians 5.33. And if you want to write this passage down, Mar Mary, <laughs> I almost did it. Mariana uh, referenced this, and Jeff even talked about it as well. Ephesians 5.33. Paul says it this way. Let each individual among you also love his own wife. Let me just say this, love your wife and no one else's wife. Don't compare your wife to someone else. Because you're comparing what you know about your wife and your life to what you don't know about his life and his wife. Love your wife. Even as himself, and let the wife see to it that she respect her husband. Notice that Paul doesn't say here, Ladies, respect your husband when he's earned it or deserved it. Respect your husband when he's done everything you've requested of him, when he's performed exactly as you wanted him to. Respect him because he, as Dawn said, is a child of God, worthy of respect. Respect in the biblical, in the covenant context, is given regardless now, I'm not saying, ladies, look past his sinful behavior. I'm not saying, and I'm not saying turn a blind eye to sinful behaviors. As Dawn said, there are consequences, but you need to let God deal with him on that. You give him what God through Christ has given you. 
unconditional respect. And could you imagine the world that we would live in if the 120 some odd couples here, if we started doing that in our home, what effect it would have on Journey Church on Southside on Brenda and Francisco's church, on Lakewood, on Concord, on all the churches represented in this region, if we simply went home and unconditionally loved and respected one another. So as we close, and Stephen and Misty are about to come back up, I want to just simply ask you this. With all that you have heard this weekend from this great panel, and give it up one more time for the panel. As you have heard them, the things that we've talked about in here in the general session, the things that we have read from Scripture, the things that we have sung, I want to ask you a simple question. This is what we ask our couples every time we close a session. What is one measurable, realistic, specific next step that you can take to apply? Molly said it earlier, I don't know if you caught it. If you try to apply everything you've heard, you're going to become overwhelmed and you won't do anything. But the best way to do progress, as we talked about last night from Philippians 1.6, is just to do the next right thing. And often it's simple. We're here in Gainesville, home of the red elephants, and how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. It's the same way in marriage. Okay? So what's one measurable, realistic, specific next step that you can take to apply what you've heard? this weekend. I want you to take just a moment, write it somewhere that you will remember it in your booklet, and then Dawn will close us in prayer.